morning YouTube. Are you guys ready for the next full garden tour? I was so uh, excited about your response to our garden and we had so many people tell us they would love to see weekly tours. At first, like the day that I posted the last one last week, I thought, man, that's gonna be a lot. That's gonna be, it's gonna feel redundant. But then as the week has stretched on and I have found so many more things, producing fruit, um, things have grown literal feet higher than they were before. And I was like, yeah, we're definitely gonna need week garden tours in order to keep up with all of this. So let's go walk through. This is a new addition to this week. We finally got our garden gate hung. Um, we're gonna be building planters here on the front and there's also going to be a, kind of a trellis that is built up around this that I can plant. Maybe some mounding roses or something like that. But um, we just took this old screen door off our house and made a gate. And we did get most of our fence up this week, which is nice. Of course, right now there's still access and um, my lint licking dog was out here this morning, so I hope I don't find too much damage from him. Here is one of our crimson sweet watermelons, and it's growing quickly. In response to the comments that I got last week, I'm gonna try to give a little more information about um, some of the varieties that we grow. We do um, largely heirlooms. Whenever it comes to some, you know, tomatoes and peppers, I do open pollinated hybrids that have been developed, but, uh, you know, it, within our generation that by breeding heirlooms. But um, I like to try different things. So we've got a lot of variety throughout the garden. Here, these are winter squash. There are a couple of varieties here. One is called Gouda and one is called Sibley. And um, I got the seeds for them from Fruition Seeds and I was really excited based on the description about these two. I am planning on maybe this week putting up some uh, mixed pieces of fencing and cattle panels that I have along this row that the squashes can climb on. There's a piece of cattle panel laying down right there that I was going to do that with. This front row is a buttercup squash and it's coming up pretty well. Here um, are some Moon and Stars watermelons. They're doing okay, these are coming up a little slow. And I don't know exactly wh what happened here, but we planted these tomatoes at the same time and this row has been really kind of puny, but this row is doing really nicely, much nicer than I expected it to in the ground, honestly. This particular row of tomatoes um, is all mixed. There's all different kinds. Right here, uh, this is an ox heart. I believe this is an orange ox heart. And um, we just tried some slicers, some you know plums and ox hearts and some cherries just to see how they did by growing them in the ground. I mentioned last week that we have very heavy clay soil. So this year we just amended the rows by tilling in some manure and just some old bedding from the goat barn but I've actually been doing a lot of research on back to Eden gardening and we are planning on implementing um, those methods in this space this fall to prepare for next year. And I'm also looking at the possibility of making some spaces in my front yard with back to Eden um, amendment methods like wood chips and that sort of thing to uh, prepare a space for a cottage garden where I can grow herbs and perennials. The primary purpose of this space was um, to be able to grow rambling things because we do all raised beds and I was experimenting with using trellises to grow things like melons and winter squashes. But as large as my in-ground garden is, um, I only have 15 of my arched cattle panel trellises and you know I use them primarily for beans, cucumbers and that sort of thing. So I didn't want to commit so much of that to experimenting with growing these big space um, hogs. So when we looked at this space that we had, even though our soil wasn't ideal, it was ideal to be able to do something in order to grow things like watermelons instead of committing so much of our trellises to them. And I'm really glad that we did this. I'm glad that we tried. Um, we had been in our minds pretty committed that our ground was ungardenable. Um, obviously that's not the case 
because these things are growing quite well um, considering how how intensely clay our soil is. The three varieties of watermelon that we did this year were Charleston Gray, Crimson Sweet, uh, Moon and Stars, hold on there was one more, it was four, Sugar Baby was the last one, and um, it looks like the Crimson Sweet is winning the race. Now some of these were started from seed in the ground whereas that one was started as a plant so it would it would have a head start but I'm starting to see some blossoms on some of the other ones and I'm really um, I'm really hoping that we will have watermelon to take to our family reunion at the end of July. I'm sure we will at that point. Here's something new that we began harvesting a little bit of this week. Um, these are pineapple ground cherries which are essentially small tomatillos. You can see here, I'm trying to do this one-handed. They grow in a husk. They look like little bitty tomatoes. And they have the most wonderful fruit flavor. They're so good. Um, we've, been, we've been coming out every morning and none of them have made it back into the house. We've just been eating them sitting here at the plant. It's really sweet. I can't exactly describe the flavor because it does have just a little bit of like an acidic tomatillo flavor, but then with really, really fruity overtones. So this is my first year to grow these. I've got more plants in the beds, which were a lot bigger and putting off a lot more fruit, but I've really struggled with caterpillars. And so um, I've popped open several ripe husks to find a little worm in there and I've popped open many to find them already eaten. On this row we've got a couple of different small melons like uh, honeydews and that sort of thing and in my bean rows here which I did read that this was beneficial whenever you're trying to amend soil to grow beans it's all different kinds green purple potted um, streaked borlotti dragon tongue all of that. Our corn is getting pretty sizely here that's one of the things that's grown a lot just in the last week. And if you see right here, I've got a full-size cattle panel. We went ahead and picked this up this week because I want to show you guys how we make our arched cattle panel trellises. We actually shot a video a couple of months ago whenever we were getting, you know, the, the, the stage of the garden in where we were putting in a cattle panel trellis and somehow the footage got lost and it's something that I really did want to put up because on um, YouTube I think there are more people who have done this but on Instagram whenever I post pictures of my garden I inevitably get asked multiple times every time I post a picture how do you make those trellises so I wanted to make a video that we could just reference and we're gonna put one more arch trellis in the garden uh, right here on the end of the two last beds so be looking for that video we'll probably put that up um, sometime this coming week we've got these beans that are flowering beautifully. This is a really neat variety called Aztec Half Runner Pole Beans. And these are very large white beans. I also got those seeds from Fruition Seed Company. And um, the dried beans were about this big around. So I'm, I'm very um, eager to get some of those and try them and see how the flavor is. This was the last bed we built this spring. And so it was the last to get planted. So everything in this is still quite small. We've got tomatoes on the other side. And on this side, uh, just some eggplants and beans and a few peppers. And there's still a lot of space. So I came in through this week. And that's where you see these spots that are exposed to the sun. Where I planted calendula and zinnias. I've enjoyed growing flowers so much more than I thought that I would. Um, I have not in the past grown many flowers and so this year it was kind of just well maybe I'll just throw them in there because I was given the seeds by people and uh, I love it. I love being able to cut a little bouquet and put it in a jar on the table and in the future I definitely want to grow many more varieties of flowers and just make that a normal part of gardening for us. I brought my, my little gathering hot out here 
because I knew that I was going to be coming across some things that would be ready to harvest. We haven't gotten there yet because we're still over on the, the, the last part that we planted of the garden. But over here there's a lot of stuff. The atomic grape tomatoes are starting to set some fruit. I've seen a lot of people growing these this year after they were on the cover of the Baker Creek Seed Catalog. It's our second year to grow atomic grape and um, I really like it. It's got a different flavor. It's not super sweet. It's almost got a, like a yeasty flavor is the only way I know how to describe it. I don't know. It's interesting. It's a good tomato. We replanted this uh, winter squash with another and it's coming up. The benefit of being in Arkansas is that if something gets damaged early in the season, you have time to replant it. So this is something we harvested for the first time this week and I think there's probably more for me to harvest now. These are our pink beans. Check those out. Aren't those beautiful? It's called Tanya's Pink Pod Bean. They do turn green when you cook them, but we did, uh, I harvested a handful of them this week and cooked them and they had a really nice flavor. So it's a good bean. I'm gonna go ahead and pick these. I noticed these Tabasco peppers on the end of this bed are starting to, to get some peppers on them. I'll let them get a little bit bigger. We got our first tomatoes this week. Um, in the last tour video, I was pretty confident that I was still gonna have at least a week or two to wait. And actually the day after I did that video, I came out and found a ripe cherry. So super um, excited to get into that part of the season. And right now I've got some slicers that are starting to blush a little bit. Here I've got a, a pink Berkeley tie-dye that is starting to turn quite a lot. It's got a little bit of cracking in it, but it's getting it's getting relatively ripe. So that one's pretty close to being picked. And I noticed the color changing on this black from Tula. It's not anywhere near ripe yet, but I'm just noticing that color change. And a couple others that I think must be close is this Kaustrally. We've got a couple of really large fruits right here. This Prudence Purple is a really big fruit. And these orange ox hearts. This plant is pretty loaded. It's got five very large fruits on it. And it's a you know pretty small plant after all the pruning. I think they'll probably be turning sometime this week. This white beauty is, it's changing colors and it's softening up. I always have a hard time with tomatoes that aren't like a color. White ones and green ones specifically. I love to grow them. I think they're really interesting. But last year, um, the green tomatoes were the hardest because they don't just stand out on the vine as being ripe. You kind of have to feel them to make sure that you're picking it at the right time. If you remember from last week, I talked about this bed having a lot of peppers and beans that were all relatively small because so many of my peppers failed and that I had sowed some flowers in the spaces. And this stuff is starting to perk up a little bit. It's looking quite a lot larger. I kind of just gave up hopes of this being super lush, but maybe it'll surprise me. Here in these two 12 foot beds, I've got a couple of tomatoes now. These seeds were sold to me as Paul Robinson and I'm pretty sure that one is, but I think that I ended up with a little bit of a cross. This one is ready. Um, this is not big enough to be a Paul Robinson. The color is right, but it's not quite big enough. It tastes nice. I'm curious to see what these taste like because this is the tomato that supposedly has like a huge following for flavor. Seeing a ton of basil this week um, and making strawberry basil lemonade. So um, pruning back my plants so that they get bushy and not super tall and flowery. And then the lemonade's just like a nice bonus. If you've never grown holy basil in your garden, I cannot implore you enough to go plant some, like as soon as possible. This is probably the best smelling thing on my farm. It smells so good. And you just like, 
you start watering it or walk by it, touch it, and the fragrance just completely overwhelms you. I want to smell like that. I want my house to smell like that. I want my husband to smell like that. It's so good. It's one of the best things I honestly think I have ever smelled is that little patch of holy basil. I just come out here and just put my hands in it and like huff the holy basil. I told you a little bit about the Kajari melon last week. Um, and then this week uh, I started to see these little fruits come up. I'm ordering some um, mesh produce bags today from Amazon. Oh, here's the bigger one. To be able to put these larger things that are growing on trellises in the bags and pin them up to the trellis for support. Um, I'll let y'all know how that goes. This is my first year to do this, so it's kind of an experiment. Last year, um, I was given five Kajari melon seeds from a friend, and I planted them kind of later in the season, and they ended up, the plant got sick, along with several of my others that got um, blight and kind of had a sh struggle after I went out of town for a weekend. And so I was really bummed. I thought I wasted my seeds. I did not get any melons. And when I went to tear the plants out, I found, you know, that it had had a runner that had gone up underneath some other plants and it had put one fruit out and it was completely right. So I brought it in and saved about 500 seeds from it. So I sent them all out in swaps this year and now I'm growing Kajari melons again where they, where they can be healthy. This next trellis has noodle beans on it and I'm about to do our first harvest to them. Um, these are really neat plants. Now Ben, my three year old, has been coming out and eating these off the plant. I tasted one yesterday and it to me it had almost like an onion flavor. I don't think I really want to eat them raw but I think they would be wonderful sauteed. On the back side here you can see there's just a lot of these beans. They're quite prolific. Wow, look at this little truss of them. They look like noodles. <laughs> it's a pretty nice little harvest. I left um, a lot of the skinnier ones because I figured I can pick them later this week. Over on this side, I've got um, the red noodle beans growing which we have not tasted yet, so I can't attest to their flavor. And these are still just a little bit small. Guess I'll take these out of my pocket. On the other end of this um, bed, where we just picked the noodle beans, are dragon tongue bush beans. And I have seen several of them uh, sh just shining in the sun, declaring that they're ready to be picked too. So I'm going to go after them. I've grown these now for, I don't even know how many years, quite a few. And they're one of my favorites. They're just very beautiful. They produce quite a lot. You This year I've just got them um growing here as bush habit they do put off some short runners if you put stakes they'll grow up just a little bit but you don't have to bush beans are kind of one of those crops that if you don't keep an eye on them and really check them regularly you'll totally miss uh, that you have a whole bunch ready to harvest you have to really move the foliage around and look down on your plant to see that you have some ready um I just got all of these. There are probably some more in there that I could have picked. They just weren't quite um, big enough. And I think if, if I were like just harvesting those beans for like a meal or something, I probably would have gone ahead and picked the smaller ones. But I'm going to pick all of the beans that are ready in the garden today, probably put them all together and can them. Dragon tongue bush beans are actually um, some of the first seeds I ever bought from Baker Creek. I remember my first Baker Creek order, I want to say was probably around 2011 or 12 when I still, uh, we lived in town and I ordered seeds. I don't remember what all I ordered, but I remember uh, 
dragon tongue bush beans being one of those things. Check out the cucamelons. They've just gone berserk. And they're putting off some fruit. It's starting to get some size to it. I mean, they're not very big full grown, but we've got a whole lot that are about that size. And then a whole lot more that are really small. Benjamin has discovered the cucamelons and so he's coming out here daily and picking them about this size and eating them. Now they'll get about twice this size and when they're still really small they have a real cucumber taste to them. They don't taste um, real sour. Now these are also called Mexican sour gherkins so they're supposed to be very lemony and I'm finding that the larger that they get the more they're taking on that lemon flavor. I've been getting um, a few little okras here and there. I have yet to get enough to really justify cooking. There's one. Okra is not something that you can just pull off very easily, um, especially if your plants are big and strong like these. So we're gonna have to cut these off with scissors. I talked to y'all a little bit about my okra last week, but I didn't tell you what varieties we were growing. Um, here in this bed, it's um, red burgundy. I've got one Clemson spineless right here. The rest are red burgundy, saved from seeds from the garden last year. Uh, down on the end, those okra plants are uh, Texas, or I think it's Texas Hill Country or just Hill Country. Um, and then over in this bed, where I have three, are Jing Orange. Now I realized my um, oversight after all those were planted that I had planted all red okras except for this one Clemson spineless so we put a few more Clemson spineless into the ground in the in-ground garden because I read that okra is a really good thing to grow when you're amending heavy clay soil because its um, roots are so unapologetic and um, I wanted to have some green just so we had kind of some balance in the color since the plants are so spaced out in our garden and we have like a little bit of okra here and a little bit over there and a little bit back in the uh, the back side of the garden, I actually like to walk around when I'm harvesting and for the most part go like right now I'm going to go look at all the okra plants even though that's not really like in the order that I'm walking. Maybe not so much with beans because I can do so many different things with them. If I only get a handful of beans, I'll just cook them up and eat them for lunch. But with a lot of things, I like to kind of look at how much I have, um, how close it is to absolutely needing to be harvested, and think about what I'm going to do with it before I pull it off the vine. Because sometimes it's best to leave things growing for a day if you're not gonna be able to put them up or uh, keep them fresh in your house because if they get a little bit bigger, um, it's not that big a deal and if they're still on the plant, they're still fresh to use. The hill country variety of okra is a squatty little guy. So far, the Jing orange okra has grown the fastest and has produced the most. Now we'll see how they do in the long run, but this one is currently winning the race. You have to watch okra because it gets really big um, and unusable really quick. This one's probably still okay, but um, much bigger than this and it would have been too hard to eat. Okay, down here on the end, sort of jumping around today, not really going in a lot of order. I'm going to check on my gherkins because I did not harvest them yesterday and I'm guessing I probably have some really large cucumbers. Sad. There go the nice little stacks of food. Oh well, this is more like real life. Set this in a little bit more secure of a place. Oh yeah. That's no gherkin. <laughs> These Parisian pickling cucumbers grow wildly fast. Now I have a couple of varieties of pickling cucumbers. I did the Parisian and then um, national pickling and then also Boston pickling. Then I also did a um, burpless slicer, which is the dark green with the waxy skin. Now those are for fresh eating because they contain so much water that if you pickle them, they kind of get real mushy. 
you want to do pickling cucumbers if you're making any sort of pickles or relish or anything like that because they really uh, maintain their texture well. I've got a few half gallons in there fermenting and I'm probably going to spend this afternoon making my first batch of canned pickles for the year. Um, this is as big as this variety gets whereas a Boston pickling or national pickling, national pickling gets more like six or seven inches long. Canned cucumbers are cooked so um, they're not crunchy. They're just not. You can use pickle crisp and that helps a little bit but if you want crunchy pickles you have to pretty much do refrigerator pickles because they don't go in the canner therefore they don't cook. Um, these because they've gotten so much bigger their seeds are probably pretty large. I will go ahead and make slices and cook them in the canner because then the fact that the seeds are large won't matter. Nice little haul, even though they're definitely mostly not gherkins. That's all from these. It's two plants on that trellis. Okay, now I'm gonna go down to this bed on the end and uh, look and see what else we have going as far as cucumbers go. I showed this to you guys last week. This is kind of one of my favorite little areas in the garden. It's just very diverse. Look at this sunflower. It's grown. It's as tall as that trellis now. It's grown about 24 inches in the last week. Isn't that wild? I'm watching these every single day, climbing triple crop tomatoes. They're not showing signs of turning yet, but I'm looking forward to when they do. Okay. I'm gonna very quickly go through these cucumbers and these. On this side, they're Armenian whites, and on this side is the National Pickling, and this is actually, um, a cucumber it's called musuri and it's an Indian variety that I was given seeds for but that um, are not widely available I, I haven't found anywhere where you can buy them but they grow just massive cucumbers look at this that's not that that has just been growing for a really long time they just get really really big and they're still good when they're big it's a big cucumber The Armenian white cucumber is technically a bitter melon, um, but it is proving to be one of my favorites this year. It's my first year growing it. It's got really um, thin skin, which has a little bit of ribbing, as you can see, and uh, the flavor is so mild. Even when they get really big, they don't get bitter the way a lot of cucumbers do. I've got some pickles fermenting inside. I just tried them yesterday, and they're wonderful. So cannot recommend this variety enough. Next year I'll give them um, their whole tre a whole trellis on their own. This year I just planted two plants on one side of a trellis because I'd never tried them before and I wasn't sure how much I'd like them. Definitely recommend the Armenian White. <laughs> oh dang, I just saw something I've definitely missed. <laughs> Oops, <laughs> golly, <laughs> look at that monster. Now this must be one of the Masori's when left to itself. Golly, I'm curious what the seeds look like on the inside of this or if this is even edible. Y'all wanna find out? I don't have a knife. works. Oh. Hey, just split it open. Look at that. Oh man. It smells wonderful. How juicy that is. Um The seeds are definitely really big. Actually, that I could save these. I think that's what I'll do. 
um, it's good. It's not bitter at all. It's definitely got that um, texture of when they get kind of bigger, they get a little harder. But it's totally edible. It's good. I'm going to just set this over here so it doesn't get everything in my basket wet. And I'll carry it in when I'm done and see about harvesting those seeds. A pretty nice little cucumber hole. Let's go check out the patty pan squash. This is a variety called Golden Mabry, I think, is how you say it. I really battle with um, pests in my area and keeping squash alive. Um, they end up getting a bacterial wilt that cucumber beetles carry. And I've had several plants that come to that already this year. Last year I did. The wonderful thing though is, is that squash is generally like a 50 day uh, plant. So I just succession sow it because it produces so much anyway. And so like we've been eating those round zucchinis and these patty pan squashes for the last couple of weeks. To the point that everybody's getting kind of sick of them and so as these plants die back i pulled out one of the round zucchinis the other day it had it had wilted um the next varieties that i planted in the garden in the in-ground garden they'll start producing which is actually like a cockazelle and uh, white marrow squashes and then i'll replant these areas um in the garden and then i'm pulling other things out and by the time those die back these will be producing again that's how we stay in squash all summer i'm actually planning on making my first batch of um of soft cheese from my goat's milk now that we have more kids and more uh Doze and milk. Previously, with just two does, my family was pretty much drinking everything fresh before I had a chance to make much out of it. Um, and so I may come out and harvest some of these squash blossoms and do uh, fried stuffed squash blossoms with the soft cheese. As of right now, it doesn't. Oh no, there are some down in there. I'm almost missed. Lord, I got a pocket full of cucumbers. Went to reach for my scissors. Found these instead. Where did I do it? Where did I put my scissors? I'll tell you what, I would lose my head if it wasn't attached. Okay, let's go get these squash. Check that out. Conjoined. It must have been a faceated blossom. It's kind of cool. I'm still checking the tomatillos regularly. I have two different varieties here that have completely obstructed the path. They are definitely healthy plants, but none of them have uh, reached ripeness yet. And over here, my jelly melon has finally begun um, flowering and getting some really small fruits. You can see that there, see how spiky it is? These are gonna be really interesting to try out. Now to look over the cherry tomatoes. We've yet to have a tomato make it into the house, though we have had some that have gotten ripe. I'm gonna get that one just a little bit longer. These are um, Principe Borghese, which it's a drying tomato. They have a wonderful flavor. They're very sweet. I'm starting to see a lot of blushing on different varieties. This right here is a Sunrise Bumblebee. It's starting to turn, but that one will be ready within a couple of days. Some of these pears may be ready within a couple of days. I don't know if you can see this down there. We've already had several um, of the Wild Boar Farms blue gold and blueberries. Uh, this one, as you can see, it's starting to turn, but I'm gonna let it ripen just a little bit more on the vine. In here, these are the blueberries. Well, before we know it, we'll have baskets full every day. I'm going to practice self-control and put this along with the other tomato in the basket. But 
I'll see you inside, tomato. Do y'all see my little project? This table has definitely seen many better days, but I, uh, it was kind of on the list to get rid of, and I decided to bring it down here and clean up the glass top and spray, spray paint the wicker table pink. Our plans are to build a sitting gazebo right in the middle of this garden space where we can just come out and enjoy the garden um, and have a place to rest when you're out here working just outside of the sun. But um, I don't want to buy nice patio furniture without having any way to cover it and protect it from the elements. So it was kind of like, well, I'm not going to buy anything. But now, even you know, we probably won't put the gazebo in until after summer uh, is, wraps up. Maybe over the winter, that'll be a project that we do. But now it would be nice to have a place to sit, especially in the evenings. We come out here a lot. We end up sitting in folding camp chairs. So I'm going to kind of hodgepodge a little furniture set for right here in the middle of the garden. So we can enjoy it this year, even though it's not exactly uh, what we envision in the long run. Okay. Here's our first row with the trellises. And I know that right here I've got some beans that are ready to be picked. These are called Borlotti bush beans. And they're very similar to the dragon tongue in a growing habit. Uh, very similar to the dragon tongue in their markings. Whereas the dragon tongue is green with like a dark purple. This has more of like a magenta streak to it. They may be slightly less streaked than dragon tongue, but I don't know. There are a lot of dragon tongues that aren't real marked up too. So um, I've grown these for a few years. We really like them. I believe you can eat them dried, but I've always picked them and um, eaten them fresh as snapping. Here is the dragon tongue next to the Borlotti for comparison. I think that's probably the only thing I have to pick down this row, but we're going to walk down here and just take a look. Here, um, we're getting quite a lot of beans coming up on here, but these are, uh, they're called Eye of the Goat, and they are dried beans, so I'll be leaving those there to dry on the uh, trellis. Same thing here. That is a skunk bean. Um, the, it's so interesting to me that they're both, they just look like green beans, but the pod of this is a really neat uh, black and white modeled uh, bean and then the eye of the goat is a real round uh, brown and tan bean that kind of has the, sh the pattern of like a goat's eye. On this side of the trellis I have a banana melons um, which I'm starting to think was probably a really bad idea because they get really big. Um, here's one that's growing and it's already quite heavy. Now I did order those produce bags and we'll just see how they do. I think these will be fine because they're growing on the ground. But as you can see, I mean, it's setting quite a bit of fruit here. There's another, there's another right there. This is two plants. And so we've got four um, fruits on those already and a lot more flowers. I may prune some of those off so they can really focus on finishing off those ones on the bottom. And on this side, we have what's called a collective farm woman melon. It is a melon that originates in Ukraine. Um, also, it's a small melon, but it's very, I mean, this is already a couple of pounds. I don't think they get just a whole lot bigger than this, but they're, it's gonna turn yellow. And that's how I know whenever it's time to um, pick it, it's setting quite a lot of fruit here. You can see these really small ones. So these are probably going to need some support. So I'll use those produce bags for that. Just slipping them down in the bag and attaching it to the trellis to give it more support. Here's my round squash that um, got sick. I had another big one right here. Now there's a fruit on here that I haven't harvested yet because it's gotten so big. You're generally supposed to harvest them about tennis ball size. So I was just going to let this one go. And I was thinking I might save the seeds from it. Because while that plant did get sick and I didn't get just a whole lot from it, um, during the two weeks that I was able to harvest from it, it was very prolific during that time and um, very tasty. We really enjoyed it. Here at the end of this are my um, ground cherries that have just been 
plagued by little caterpillars. All of these husks that have come off would have been ones that we could eaten, but they're all empty because something got to it before us. Our little blueberry plants down here are they only had a few fruits on them this year and we'll prune them next year. This was their first year. But we've picked off about six little blueberries and of course eaten them just standing right here at the plant. Down here, I've got beets that are probably pretty close to picking. Here are, um, this is a slicer cucumber so I'm gonna let it get a little larger. I use these for juicing. Here we've got the Boston. Boston pickling variety of cucumbers and grab these. Oh, it looks like I am definitely gonna be making some pickles today. I'm gonna grab my basket and we're gonna go down this last row because I know I have some harvesting to do right here on this bean trellis. You'll see that. These are Marvel of Venice, um, which is a yellow fresh eating bean. And there are a lot on this to be picked. And then on this side, um, they're called Busy Homesteader, another fresh eating green bean. Um, and, I mean, they're just very heavy laden. Wow, that's a lot of beans. Um, yeah, I've got some work to do. Okay, one more thing to pick. Here we've got tomatoes that aren't ready yet. Some peppers on this side. Um, these are called Corbacci Sweet. It's very similar to Jimmy Nardello if you've ever grown that. It's a long, curly, red, very sweet pepper. Um, on this trellis, I've got lima beans which I have not noticed them putting anything out yet. Here are more peppers. I need to stake these. Um, here are jalapenos, which I have actually picked a few of. They're not quite ready to pick anymore, but they're starting to set fruit. These are Scarlet Runner pole beans. Now you can eat these fresh, just like you would eat a green bean. But as you can tell from what we just harvested, I don't need any more green beans. So I'm planning on letting these dry on the trellis for us to eat in soups. Um, and we planted this next trellis with Scarlet Runners as well. My poblano peppers here are beginning to set quite a lot of fruit. Um, I don't know if you can see here, there's a lot of little ones. There's probably 10 on that plant. Um, those will be dried for chili powder. Last week I said I was gonna tear out these salad greens and over the course of the week, I actually decided not to. Them, and as well as my kale, my kale is being just ravaged by little caterpillars. However, my feeling is, is if they're eating the kale, which I'm quite tired of, um, they're not eating all the stuff that I want. So I'm still able to come out and pick a little bit here and there for juice. But as of right now, I am leaving these things almost just as a habitat. The salad greens have a lot of flowers, so the bees like them. Um, it's, there's arugula in here that has bolted, and so um, I'm just gonna leave them and let the bees enjoy them because I don't need to replant for another month anyway. Same thing, I've got this lettuce that's bolting I'd like to save the seeds of. Um, this is broccoli which I cannot believe um, is actually getting ahead in this heat. That's very small head and it'll flower. It won't, I won't get to eat this because it just took so long. This is a cold weather crop. I planted it in February and it just took a long time. I am gonna replant broccoli and stuff to grow through the winter. But right now I'm gonna pick my calendula flower. Calendula has a lot of um, benefit for the skin and um, what I'm doing is I'm growing these I'm taking them in the house I'm laying them out on a piece of uh, fabric just a little towel that's in my kitchen that has been there throughout this whole season and you just put them 
face down and let them dry there and then you can put them in a jar. And what I'll do with these um, as dried flowers is infuse them into oil for salves and uh, soap making. They're very, very beneficial for calming any sort of rash, um, minor scrapes and bruises, burns, that sort of thing. Um, so these we grow for um, medicinal purposes. My camera died right as I finished up with the calendula, which was good timing because that was the end of the tour. We saw the whole garden um, and my goats were beginning to holler that they wanted me to come and milk them. So here is our harvest for today. Um, pretty good. Ben has already snagged the tomato out of the basket and uh, decimated about half of it. He just gave it to me to share, so kind of him. Um, thank you guys so much. I look forward to sharing the garden with you again next week. Today is June the 16th, so we'll see what it looks like in another seven days. Thank you all, until next time.